Alright everyone, how you all doing? Hope you can safe out there. Today I'm doing another Marvel Legends review and it's one I've been looking forward to for <laughs> quite some time and boy is this ever a great figure. It's the Marvel Legends Retro Wave, Ben Riley, the Sensational Spider-Man. And oh boy this is a figure I uh, kind of love. Uh, ben Riley was, or should I say Ben Riley, took over the role of Spider-Man kind of around about the time I started buying comic books as a kid. In the uh, late 90s here in the UK, when we were getting reprints of like the early to mid 90s US comics. So, kind of when I got into it, he was taking over the role of Spider-Man. So, this is very nostalgic for me. Or well, I picked this figure, and the entire wave up in fact, from uh, the fine folks over at Comics and Cocktails. As always, I highly recommend them, great UK retailer. Though actually he's like appearing alongside most of the rest of the wave, in Smith's Toys as well, that was a bit of a shocker, but I know Smith's have really upped their game recently and they get a lot of really good Marvel Legends in really early. <laughs> so, uh, just off the bat, this is not going to mess around here. This is a great figure, Just I absolutely love it. It's damn near perfect. But, okay, you all know how I do things. Backstory of the character. And boy, is it ever a, uh, an interesting backstory. Really, it starts in July 1975 in The Amazing Spider-Man number 149. In this issue, the sort of villain of the time, the Jackal, revealed himself to actually be a, well, a rather creepy professor of Spider-Man's named Miles Warren. Now what had happened was, this was after the death of Gwen Stacy, and Miles Warren was a little obsessed with her, as in totally obsessed with her, and she was one of his students, so yeah. But what else he was also obsessed with was cloning. And he was actually able to crack cloning. As you can imagine, probably one of the first things he did was he took some DNA samples that had been given to him by his students and cloned Gwen Stacy. And shortly thereafter also created himself a costumed identity as the, uh, the Jackal, which was very weird. <laughs> kind of like a hairy goblin. It's weird. <laughs> But um, yeah, not only that, but by studying these genetic samples, he also figured out that Peter Parker was Spider-Man. And because he blamed Peter Parker for the death of Gwen Stacy, he got his revenge by cloning him. And this was all like a, a big plot where he kidnapped uh, Ned Leeds, had him strapped to a bomb, and had the two Spider-Men, one of which was real, one of which was a clone, fight each other. And the winner would presumably save the day. Though that didn't actually happen. Uh, the Gwen clone, who had been under mind control, he yeah, broke that control, uh, convinced Miles Warren that what he was doing was wrong. He kind of had a bit of a, a bit of a split where the Jackal persona and his normal one were separate. But she got through to the Miles Warren. He let Ned Leeds go. He went to try and disarm the bomb, but it went off. And in the explosion, the Jackal was seemingly killed, and so was one of the two Spider-Men. And, yeah, that led up to a bit of a... Uh, interesting dilemma and um, in the next issue like the spider-man that survived was unsure of whether or not he was the real spider-man but he he sort of like figured out that because he also had emotions for mary jane watson something that a clone of him wouldn't have necessarily or probably at all because if the uh, yeah it, the idea was like a clone couldn't have such strong memories of a person such strong emotional attachments he realized he must be original he must be the original so in the subsequent issue after that, in uh, Amazing Spider-Man 151, he disposed of the body that was left behind, presumably thinking it was a clone. Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't, who knows? We know nowadays, but, you know. Um, he threw it down a smokestack, and he thought that was it, and for many, many years it was. Hmm. Until we got to that rather interesting period of time called the 90s. And in August of 1994, the clone returned. You see, the clone hadn't died, he'd survived, and he'd escaped the smokestack, just spent the last in-universe five years as a separate person, calling himself Ben Riley. Now, initially the two clashed because Peter Parker was in a real bad mental place at the time, and he basically had an emotional and mental breakdown, but this was brought on by, like, the, um, lots of things, actually. His wife was pregnant. The people he thought were his parents turned out to actually not be his parents. Uh, they were just copies of his parents that then were killed. Aunt May had just become really sick and gone to hospital, which is the reason why Ben Riley had come back to New York, because he'd been keeping tabs on her. 
um, in secret and he just wanted to make sure she was okay. But yeah, the two of them met. They set aside the differences eventually. And this led to like, the biggest 90s Spider-Man thing. Actually, probably one of the biggest Spider-Man things of all time. The Clone Saga. Now, I'm not going to get into like, the, the, what everything happened in the Clone Saga. It was, it was huge. The Jackal came back to life in a weird, weird body. Um, other spider clones appeared. Uh, ben Riley took over. The, well, Ben Riley took up the mantle of another spider person, calling himself the Scarlet Spider, in one of my favourite costumes of all times. To be fair, it's really cool. It's very nineties, but I still like it. But um, yeah, that was it for a few years. But then eventually, with Mary Jane being pregnant, or as I say, a few years like in real life, in comic books, it was a few months. Say, but Mary Jane being pregnant, Peter Parker wanted to step away from being Spider Man. And so pass the mantle on to Ben Riley, mainly because, as well as this, it was also revealed that it looks as if the Peter Parker we'd known was actually the clone, and Ben was the original. Now this would actually eventually be proven to be wrong, and a uh, deliberate lie. But at the time, that's what everyone thought. So that brought us to the Sensational Spider-Man issue zero, which, alongside having some brilliant, like, I'm going to put them up here. These are actual like proposed costume. Uh, designs for Ben Riley to wear as Spider-Man, and some of them are brilliant, some of them are awful. I think some of them have actually been used since. But now he debuted his sensational Spider-Man outfit, which I love. It's a fantastic outfit. It's stylish. It's brilliant. It's so good. Like it survived after like once Ben Riley stopped being Spider-Man, the costume lived on for years as the main costume for uh, Mayday Parker, Spider Girl in the MC2 universe. It's just such a great costume. And yeah, this was the costume Ben Riley wore in the Sensational Spider Man. In the, I think, like, couple of months, at least a year of him having the title or him being the main Spider Man. And these are the Spider Man books I've read as a kid. I, I, like the ones that I was reading when they came out, like, monthly in um, those, like, like uh, you used to get, like, three comic books all put together in one uh, mini trade in the UK, one, like, once a month. I used to get them, and he was a Spider-Man in those, and it was it was great. He was very different to Peter Parker. He didn't work at the Daily Bugle. He instead, worked at the Daily Grind, a coffee shop. He dyed his hair blonde, and it was an interesting story. And I actually really liked Ben Riley as Spider-Man. It was it was good, but of course um, he had villains to fight. Most of which were just really just '90s redesigns of Peter Parker's villains and some really awful original ones. But one of the things that really stood out was a period where he was actually possessed by the Carnage symbiote and became Spider Carnage. And this is a really great design for a character. It just looks brutal and, as I say, very 90s. And it was so loved, in fact. Like, it still gets used nowadays in covers and stuff. But modern artists now still like to draw it. It was so good, in fact, at the time, Spider Carnage ended up being the big bad at the end of the uh, Spider Man, like the 90s cartoon series. That was really cool. I mean,. You, you know you've done well when you're the villain of the main uh, cartoon for a character. Though, of course, Ben Riley's time as Spider-Man came to an end. It was eventually revealed that the whole thing, the clone saga, uh, Miles Warren, the test results that showed Peter Parker was the clone, was all the machinations of Norman Osborn, who apparently hadn't died all those years ago. He'd been in the background manipulating events. Now, unfortunately, he attempted to kill Peter Parker, Ben managed to jump in the way and, and kind of kind of like how Norman Osborn must have died being impaled by his glider at, during the death of Gwen Stacy. Instead, Ben Riley was impaled by the glider and died. And he also brought an end to the clone saga because as he died he decomposed, which is apparently what clones did back then, proving that Peter Parker was the real uh, well, Peter Parker. And that was it for a long time. Until Marvel Gave him to the devil himself. Ooh, Dan Slot. Jesus. Okay, well, Dan Slot brought him back in the clone conspiracy, which then led to Ben Riley Scarlet Spider. These are terrible, terrible books. The only upside is Ben Riley's back. Just, just leave it at that. Ignore everything that happened in them. Just remember the fact Ben Riley is back. That's all you need to know. And recently he made a couple of good appearances. Most notably, he's a supporting character. Oh, <laughs> he's in the current Iron Man run as one of a bunch of heroes that Iron Man brought together because they were nobodies and 
no one will be able to think of a way to beat them because no one will ever consider fighting them in the first place. He's actually quite good in that. And like currently, he's actually been taking... Well, he's currently using the mantle of Spider-Man and he's being sponsored by the Beyond Corporation, who are totally not an evil corporation by any stretch of the imagination. Now, how could you possibly think that? And he is their Spider-Man, because it turns out they bought the uh, right and trademark to the Spider-Man title, so... <laughs> oh dear. But um, that's an ongoing series at the moment, and it's... Okay, I'm not a big fan of the costume he wears in it. I wish they'd brought back his old Spider-Man costume instead of this weird one, but... Uh, apparently I'm also not the only one who thinks that, because Marvel have also announced they're doing a Ben Riley Spider-Man series later this year, which is like set during the, the during his original run as Spider-Man. Kind of like what they did with the Symbiote Spider-Man series, which all take place during the time when Peter Parker had the Symbiote costume. So these are all just going to be stories within that period. And just the covers alone, I'm really looking forward to that. And it's going to be great. And of course, this isn't the only... Um, or oh, this figure I'm reviewing now, should I say, isn't the first Marvel Legends Ben Riley figure. There was one right at the start uh, of Hasbro's Marvel Legends during the, uh, should I say, in the Ares Builder figure wave. It wasn't great. It was... I passed on it because I thought, no, it just looks naff. But luckily, <laughs> they did an even better one a couple of years later during the, like, the new renaissance of Marvel Legends in the Absorber Man wave. Really great. It was on the Pizza Spidey book. It was just fantastic. I had it. I only sold it recently because this figure was coming out. And it was great. Uh, it even had something really cool. As I said, like, Spider Carnage popular. This figure came with an alternative head and hands to turn him, like, most of the way into Spider Carnage. All he really needed was some different lower legs. But, yeah, it was there. This was a, basically two figures in one. It was brilliant. And, yeah, as I say, Ben Riley Spider-Man, that classic sensational Spider-Man costume... I love it, a lot of other people do too, and it stood the test of time because it's still in the uh, comic book zeitgeist, and I really think it's not going to go anywhere anytime soon. But okay, okay anyway, onto this figure. Uh, this figure uses the Retro Spider Man body, the same one that was used on the Retro Spider Man, the first Retro Spider Man wave. How many times can I say Retro Spider Man? It's really great, it's got that Power Rangers. Um, diaphragm pivot joint as well as a ab crunch it just works really well oh and the, the packaging this thing comes in is a like everything else in this retro spider-man collection a throwback to the 90s spider-man cartoon really cool i kind of wish though they'd actually done it this one slightly differently because there was actually a version of that 90s packaging which had ben riley as the spider-man on it that would have been a really really nice nod but i can live with this it's still really great as I say, this figure is is brilliant. Uh, as well as the opening wall crawling hands, you come to the pair of clenched fists, which look really good. I've always loved Ben Riley's gloves. It's like the the finger, the, the gloves themselves are blue, but the pinky finger, the pointing finger, and the thumb are red webbed, and it just looks really interesting. Way of differentiating the fingers that do the flipping in the web flipping pose. <laughs> And speaking of web flipping, he of course comes with web flipping hands because this is a proper Spider-Man figure and unlike the original Retro Spider-Man release, he comes with all three sets of hands he needs. So you don't have to hunt down the Ultimate Spider-Man and Vulture 2-pack to nick the hands from that for Retro Spider-Man like I had to do. But yeah, all three sets of hands look fantastic. Unfortunately, well I say unfortunately, it's, it doesn't need to come with anything else. But I kind of wish it did. Like they did a retro Scarlet Spider a couple of years ago, which ironically didn't come with all the hands it needed. It missed the wall crawling hands, just like the retro Spider Man. But it came with a blonde head version of the Peter Parker head sculpt, which I really wish this figure came with, because I really want that to go with this figure. And I hate having to track that down because I know it's going to cost an absolute arm and a flipping leg. But I think I'm going to have to. Yeah. And. Okay, apart from accessories, this figure is also just, as I said, it uses that same book as the Spider-Man, the, the original retro one. And it's articulated up the arse. I mean, jeez, look at this thing. It can pull off some fantastic poses. It can do that, like, superhero landing fantastically. If you've got a clear stand, you can basically have some fantastic acrobatic poses, web flipping poses, leaping through the air poses. This figure looks dynamic in every position you put it in. And the only real, like, fault paint-wise, like, the paint's fantastic on it. The only thing I'd say is, 
the uh, calf, the, the pins on the bottom. How can I put this? Some of the pins aren't coloured properly. Like the the one, the lower ones on the lower part of the knee. The, both sides of the pin are red, because the outside the leg is red, but the inside is blue. And as far as I understand, a pin is a two-part thing. So I don't get why they could have made the part which goes on the inside blue and leave the outer part. Who knows why? It, it, there might be reasons. It's not like I can't fix it. I can colour match some paint. It's a tiny piece. It'll, it'll be gone probably by the time this review goes out. But that's the only real, like, teeny tiny piddling gripe I have with this figure because all in all, it's just fantastic. Okay, so that's me just flaunt. That's just me gushing over this figure. Let's compare him to some other figures in my collection. Up first, <laughs> why not? Let's compare him to Peter Parker, the Retro Wave version. This one I've took the glasses off because I thought the glasses were awful and fixed the hair. Looks really good. Great build. They sort of match up as they should. Uh, here he is next to the Green Goblin. Ooh, that's awkward. Yeah, they look great together. The colours really pop next to each other because obviously they've got completely opposite colours as all heroes and their adversaries should. Here he is next to Johnny Storm. I thought I'd put those two together. Oh, this is the, um, the Hasbro Pulse exclusive one where he's depowered. Or not entirely flamed up, shall I say. I thought these two go nice together because the wonderful Christmas issue where the two of them meet on the Statue of Liberty because uh, Johnny used to meet Peter Parker there. And when he meets Ben, Ben has to explain the whole situation to him and they bond over it, which is nice. Here he is next to the uh, previously PulseCon exclusive. Now I think you can just get on Hasbro Pulse. Venom looks really great. There's a nice difference in heft and beef between the two that I really like. Here he is with my Marvel Legends of the Year for last year, the 2021 winner, the retro thing. Yeah, they both look so good. God, these retro figures are amazing, aren't they? Just, I don't think there's any of them I don't like. They're just all fantastic. And of course, the one I've definitely got to compare him to above all others, he's with that original retro Spider-Man. And they both look fantastic. The Ben, or this one, the Sensational Spider-Man's red, seems a bit richer in person. Um, not only that, but actually I think the retro one, the joints feel a little, not looser, but clickier. Which is a weird thing. I don't know, the, the joints feel different. This one feels a lot tighter, but also smoother at the same time. And also the pins. <laughs> Ironically, the retro Spider-Man, the first one, the issue with the pins exists on the elbows. Because it's red one side, blue the other on the arms. But the legs are fine because where the pins are, are all blue. The exact opposite of this figure, where the arms are perfectly fine because all the pins are the right colours, and it's near the knees that have got the uh, wrong colour on the inside. Yeah, so where's the blue? I wonder if it's hard to make. I wonder if it's hard for them to make blue pins. But as you can see, though, the, these two figures together look fantastic, as you'd expect, because they're effectively the same sculpting, just with different paint. Oh, and um, I forgot to mention before, this figure also has the uh, external web shooters that Ben Riley used. They are removable if you want. Uh, even if you don't want them to be removed, they'll normally fall off. You take the hands off. I've got to say that. But that's the only real sculptural difference between the two. Maybe the eyes are slightly different, possibly, or could be the way they're painted. But the two of them together look absolutely fantastic. So yeah, folks, that's my review of this figure. And obviously, unless you couldn't guess, I absolutely adore it. It's a absolutely brilliant figure. If it, if I got it before. The end of last year, I don't know if it, it might have been, oh, it would have been a contender for best of the year. It might have been second behind Thing, or maybe not. It would have been a very tight competition. But if you can get this figure, look, I recommend getting him. As I said, I got it from Comics and Cocktails, In Demand, and Kapow have them in. Smith's Toys have them in, for God's sake. I mean, that's. I'd almost recommend going to them um, first just to double check if they've got one in, because it's always worth looking at the paint on these things in person. But if, not, if you're not worried about that too much, let's say just order them online. Get them from Hasbro themselves, actually, if you want. I forgot about them. I always forget about those as a as a uh, online retailer. But yeah, that's it, folks. I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, please leave a like. Any comments or ideas, you know, please leave them below. And if you're not subscribed already to the channel, please subscribe for more mediocre contents. To, <laughs> mediocre contest. Oh, Lord. Mediocre contents. See what I mean? At best. Until next time, folks, I want you all to stay safe, stay sane, and keep on rolling. I'll see you all next time. Ta-da!